So this is the jack-o-lantern we're going to be sprucing up today with some LEDs and a TI launch pad and Energia. And uh, as you can see right now, it's just a boring old fake jack-o-lantern with an incandescent bulb, but we're going to change that. And since this is a kind of a hello world kind of project, since we're doing the Energia and the uh, launch pad, I'm actually probably just going to put an LED one LED in each eye, one in the nose, and maybe three in the mouth. And then we'll be able to control each one of those separately as far as fading in and out and whatnot. So let's go ahead and take a look over here at the my little parts box. And I'll pick out some LEDs. So I've got a little baggie here with a bunch of assorted LEDs. I'm just going to pick out some uh, some good colors here. I might go like green on the eyes and then let's see maybe we'll go yellow on the nose oh, okay would you get it for me? You got it. Go ahead. You got it. There you go. Thank you. Can I help you with that part of the picture? Sure. Okay. Then we're going to use, so that's the three we're going to use. We're going to use the three pink ones for the mouth, the two green ones for the eyes, and the yellow one for the nose, okay? Okay. Does that sound good to you? Yeah. Okay, good deal. Okay, so obviously the first thing to do is to go ahead and uh, take this thing apart because we're going to rip the I'm just going to go ahead and take this incandescent garbage out of here while my Siamese cat tries to get inside the pumpkin. <laughs> we were just talking about how funny that would be if we uh, stuck that on his head and he walked around with a pumpkin head. I think my daughter would like that. Okay, so we've got the stuffing out of our pumpkin. Okay, so I'm not 100% certain yet how I'm going to actually mount the LEDs. I uh, think I might use some some foil and some cones and try and like reflect it back out of the pumpkin, but we'll, we'll see. It's not important at this point. We'll figure that out later. The important thing now is I'm going to go ahead and take this red and white uh, jumper wire here and solder it to each one of these LEDs, and I'm going to leave myself plenty of slack so we have options. Um, so we have options for where we want to mount it because I'm going to put, definitely going to put the electronics probably, probably going to mount it back here. Uh, don't really want to put it here. I don't have a whole lot of room there. Uh, probably mount it back here and I'm going to have plenty of slack so I can take the board out if I need to make adjustments, put it back in. So go ahead and uh, put some wires onto these LEDs now. rest of my wires and this wire was actually a pretty good deal it's uh, I'm trying to remember what gauge it is it's definitely thicker than your standard jumper wires that you use I guess you would call it hookup wire I got it from uh, this is wire that I got from Home Depot big spool of it for like six bucks it's called doorbell hookup wire and it's solid, solid copper, so I don't have to play around with the uh, stranded stuff. And of course.
and it's really important to try and get both wires hot simultaneously so you don't end up with a cold joint especially with these kind because there's going to be stress put on these wires we already know that so if you, and these connections aren't as good as you would have like on a uh, I mean that's hot Ow. so now we have a yellow for the nose we've got the two greens for the eyes two pinks for the mouth and now I'm gonna go ahead and get the board and we're gonna go ahead and hook this thing up to the launch pad okay I'm getting my wife Candace to help now she is currently making a reflector for one of the eyes going to mount inside the pumpkin like you see her doing there and it's going to have foil on the inside the LED will be shining towards the back of the cup and it should make a nice little glow we're going to do that on the eyes the nose and then a different shape for the mouth going to trim around the edge here. Oh no, here we go. Mounting the LED. And we got to be real sure that the wires don't short out against the foil. I may have to look at that. Insulate it somehow. Yeah, Can I you might have to some put some uh, tape around each one. No, I'm going to uh, have some heat shrink. Okay. I'll work on that while you work on some more cups, okay? So that's the idea for the cups. So I'm going to go ahead and get to work on the heat shrink. Okay, so I slid the heat shrink over, and now we're just going to use... ...soldering iron to kind of help... ...shrink the tube down against the wire. And that'll keep it from shorting out against the other wire and the foil. Get nice and tight there, Sarah, and they should be able to see the uh, heat shrink collapsing down against the wire. I don't exist. Okay. All right, there we go. So it's on there nice and tight now. It's not going anywhere. It's one down, five to go. All right. Now Candace is just attaching, trying to secure the LED to the cup. With a zip tie. Just want to kind of make sure it somewhat points to the back so it can reflect off of the uh, foil. Now she's just applying the super glue. Seems to be holding pretty well in the eyes so far.
Okay, I've skipped ahead a bit because this part is pretty simple. We have a launch pad MSP430 here with an MSP430G2553 installed. Right here, I've got um, these DuPont jumpers, which are female on one end, male on the other, going from the uh, ports 1.0 to 1.5 of the launch pad over to the breadboard. Um, and then I've also got another connector going from just the ground, the common ground of the launch pad over to the ground on the uh, power bus of the breadboard. Now from the pumpkin side, we have the red leads which are coming from the cathodes of each LED going to a 100 ohm resistor that's then connected to the I.O. pin on the launch pad. The anode side, which is all the white wires, they're just simply connected to ground. So this is a very simple circuit. Each uh, LED each LED has an uh, I.O. pin here on the launch pad, so there's no multiplexing or anything like that going on. We're trying to keep this as simple as possible. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look now at how to go ahead and program this pumpkin up. Okay, now that we got the pumpkin built, we just need to install the Energia IDE. And that's pretty simple. I'll go ahead and show you guys how to do it now. I'm going to be installing the Windows 7 version here. You can see they have OS 10, Windows, and Linux versions. And here's a binary file right here for Windows. It's already built. And we just have to wait for this to download. Their server's pretty quick. Okay, so the download is finished. It took about two or three minutes. It wasn't too bad for 159 megabyte download. And now I'll just go ahead and open the folder here. And to install, all you do is drag. that zipped up folder to your desktop or wherever you whatever folder you'd like to put it in and you can see it'll just go ahead and start extracting all those files and it's a lot of them and it's gonna take a while this says 11 minutes and uh, that's pretty close to what it took and I'm running this on a about a three-year-old cheap Toshiba laptop so your, your experience may be a little better but I'll come back when this is finished. Okay, now that the files are transferred, that is all that's required for the basic installation of Energia. And we'll go ahead and open the folder up and take a look. You'll see the uh, Energia icon here. And this should look very familiar versus uh, Arduino. It's actually just a basically the same as Arduino. It's just red. And uh, let me see. I'll pull up Arduino for a quick comparison. There's Arduino 1.5 1 dot something here. But Energia is basically just a spin-off. Or a, um, it's a different branch. or No, a fork excuse me, a fork of Arduino of wiring. But you can see the uh, similarity in the two IDEs. They're like pretty much the same except for color scheme. Um, so I'll go ahead and close that up and we'll take a little closer look at Energia. Uh, if you go to tools and then board you'll see these are the different uh, launch pads and chips and actually you don't have to absolutely have the launch pad to program the chips but uh, these are the different chips that are supported the 2231, 2452 and in our case we're going to be using the 2553 so that's perfect um, another very good resource to use when first starting out with Energia now you use pretty much the same basic code The pinouts. Take a look here. Ah, if you go to the Energia website, 
there is a page where they've graciously provided the pinouts for these boards. That's a 2452. Now it's on two different revisions. Okay, so here is the board and the chip we're actually going to be using is the uh, MSP 430G 2553. And you could tell this numbering system, this pin number, whenever you're addressing the uh, pins in the Energia IDE, you just use these pin numbers and that's fine. I think you can also use the port numbers or, you know, um, AO, A1, A2, etc. But it's just fine to use the you know, 1 through 20 pin numbers. Um, that'll work just fine too. So let's go ahead and go ahead and do an example here. And we are connected pins 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 for this project. So I'll go ahead and set those up now. And we'll just do pin mode. I'll do a loop. I'll do a four i equals two i less than eight, and then we'll do i plus plus. And we'll do pin mode i comma and we're just going to set all those pins up as outputs. We'll close that off and that should be good. And then it's just like regular Arduino. You just click here to verify and compiles. Oh, see I already found an error. And I can declare my variable type right there in the statement of course just like with Arduino. it verify and it'll do a compile it'll give you an idea how much size you're looking at here so we'll go ahead and put I'm not sure uh, at this point which one is which so we'll do a digital write um, do a two comma high and then we'll go ahead and I clicked on verify, but really I'm just going to go ahead and upload this now. It's verified. I just want to see which one of these is which. All right, I just want to note one thing. Um, I actually forgot to set the output pins, and to do that, you just in the setup portion, I'm just going to do a digital write for each one to be set low. There we go. Then now if because if you if you just leave it then um, there's no telling what state it's going to be in. Whenever I did a test run all the all the LEDs on the pumpkin were on. So I'll go ahead and give this a shot now. Okay, so here we are trying to do a test run and we're going to light up pin number two which should be one of the eyes, not sure which one. Uploading the code right now. Okay, so that's two. And then I'll do a quick change on the code just to test. And we're gonna light up three. Okay. And then I'm gonna change the code again. We're gonna light up four. Should be the nose. Okay, very good. And then we're going to go ahead and light up five. And I'm just doing a digital right high here each time. Okay, and then we'll do six. Looks like six is the left side of the mouth. And then seven, I guess, is the middle. Find out. Yeah, kind of hard to tell, but yes, yeah, seven is in the middle there. Okay, so all the LEDs work fine, and we'll go back and look at a little more code now. 
So I'm going to go ahead and add a little more code just to at least get all the LEDs lit up. I'm going to assume you guys know how to manipulate LEDs in code with an Arduino, but just for fun, I'll go ahead and write just a little code. And I'm going to make a couple of subroutines here called, call this one all on. And this will simply be a loop to turn all the LEDs on. And this is pretty much like our setup code was. Just do a digital right I comma high. And then I can take this same bit of code here, copy it, paste it, and make another routine called all off. And we'll make this one write them all low. Alrighty. And now in our main loop, we'll do a all on first. We'll delay 100 milliseconds. We'll do an all off. If I can type. And we'll delay another 100 milliseconds. And that should just give us a blink, blink, blink. I'll do a quick test here. Compiles fine. It's not even a K, which is good. And we'll go ahead and go back over to the video and see what the code does. Okay, so we're back at the pumpkin again. Back it up a little bit here. Get a little better view. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and just upload that little bit of code. And we should hopefully see all the LEDs flash on and off at a 100 millisecond rate. And I'll go ahead and do a little tweak here. We'll change it to, let's say, 50 milliseconds. All right, and you can actually, if you go low enough here, if you do a little bit, if you did a little randomization or something like that, you could also make it look like a, uh, you know, flickering type candle or something like that's going on. There you go. And you might see some weird effects due to the uh, rate of the video frames here. So this isn't going to be the final code, but you can get the idea of how the... Uh, Energia IDE works now and I'll, I'll post the final code and some final video after I finish programming the pumpkin.